Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all our witnesses for being here today. You know, today's hearing uh, reasserts a, a basic principle of, of American life, uh, that government should work for the people. And that's why we have programs like Social Security Disability Insurance and SSI to help citizens when they need it most. And as representatives of the American people, we've been sent to the nation's capital to ensure that government does serve the people efficiently and effectively, mindful that it's the people that fund these government services. So it's disappointing and, and frustrating to hear some of the numbers being shared today. I mean, the, the Social Security Administration's failure to deliver these services is, I mean, almost you could say it's unconscionable. Um, you know, when I, I looked at, uh, as I was preparing for this hearing, and I looked up and, and basically, I would have to say that the Social Security Administration is failing in its mission to, quote, deliver Social Security services that meet the changing needs of the public, unquote. And how is it that over the past two decades there's been a decrease in disability claims, uh, applicants anyway, uh, yet in recent years the times have been increasing? And, you know, as we talked about before, since 2009, wait times for initial claim decisions have increased uh, by 83% to 220 days. Uh, I view it as a travesty that uh, uh, American citizens can't get the federal government to process a valid claim without them having to jump through hoops or paying an attorney uh, to force the issue. No offense to the attorneys that are here uh, that, that help solve that problem. Um, however, instead of focusing on these issues, how we make sure the, the program works better, uh, the SSA, under the direction of the Biden administration, has instead prioritized uh, improving optics on equity initiatives. I say optics because how does it help any claimant, no matter their race or background, to wait longer to receive the benefits they've applied for? So already $100 million have been spent on these efforts in the last three years, and, and this year's SSA budget request allocates another $60 million to continue to boost these so-called equity efforts without accounting for the necessary process improvements and modernizations needed to actually service the wider base of claimants they're hoping to reach. And that's just one example of how SSA is falling short. We live in a dynamic and rapidly changing world, and SSA has failed to keep pace with this change in the workplace. Ms. Russell, uh, in the past 40 years, we've seen significant improvements to access and care of these individuals with disabilities. However, it's been pointed out earlier that SSA is still using a Dictionary of Occupational Titles uh, from 1977 that was last partially updated over 30 years ago. How does that outdated data affect an examiner's ability to efficiently process a claim, and would you say it takes longer and delays uh, some of the processing of those claims? Thank you for the question, Congressman Estes. Estes. Yes, it, it does impact the processing time because the skills that we are looking to match uh, a claimant to see if they can return to work um, in their um, relevant work history, we're not. it's hard to find that in the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. So it does take longer to process, and the jobs that we have today are not in the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. You know, we have heard about um, the jobs that are in the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, and those skills just don't translate. So it does um, make the job harder for our disability examiners, and we look forward to when that is updated. Yeah. So what what do you do in the case of, uh, like, a, a job title like a web developer? Obviously, it wasn't here in 1977. I mean, what what's your steps that you do, and how do you sort through addressing their claim or their issue? Well, in brief, the approach is to look at the job skills that the person had in their position. That's why the information on the work history is so important. Um, and that's also why the information needs to be relevant and recent in the work history, because the job that a person did 15 years ago, they may not be able to do that job anymore. But for example, with your example, web design, we're looking at the skills that are described for that work, and then we're looking at skills that are in alignment with that or other jobs that are in the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. All right. Well, thank you. And and I was glad to hear in your in your remarks you talked about you have the funding to, to pay the, the personnel. You just need to be able to get them hired so that uh, they can actually be there to do the, the processing, which obviously is an issue across the country now with our, our workforce shortages. And um, Mr. Camp, your, your story uh, really, I guess, is heart-rendering uh, to go through that in terms of the issues that... Uh, um, your, your individual that you referenced went through. 
I mean, how does how does something like the outdated DOT affect applicants and their process to go through to get their claims? To wait hundreds of days only to be told that you're denied because you should go do a job that even the claimant knows obviously does not exist is discouraging, deeply bothersome. The claimants often stop the process. They leave the claims process. And from initial to reconsideration, there's a drop off. From reconsideration to the judge stage, there's a drop off of legitimate claims that may have been approved because to be told after hundreds of days that this agency isn't really there for you and frankly is not taking it seriously it causes claimants to come out of the process. And that is something that is not measured, but should be. Uh, it, is, it is remedied already by Department of Labor and uh, that would improve the process. That would make their uh, exper the claimant's experience more reliable, more accurate, better for all of us. We want the correct outcome on the cases. If you are disabled, you should be approved. If you're not disabled, you should be denied. But it should be something you can rely upon. And some of the time, you might want to know what you should go try to do next. Perhaps there is a job out there right. where Social Security could help you get a suggestion right. okay. and then put you in voc rehab and go do it. So thank you. And I yield back. 